Well, thanks to Cord and the organizers for putting this on. Thanks for everyone to coming for coming today. How many were here last year? Well, Cord was right. Cord uh, told me, well, he did some more pancreas surgery last year. I want to talk more about liver surgery this year, but I couldn't help myself. I had to put some pancreas in there because, but it's a nice, it's a nice segue. It's, it's where, where the tumors start out um, before they go to the liver. And so I thought it made sense to talk about them both together. Um, and then just to put it in context, I know uh, in general we're talking about the endocrine tumors and the ones that are functional, make stuff, make hormones. But uh, it's a smaller percentage of the pancreas tumors. The vast majority are on this, this left side. Uh, and then even of the endocrine tumors, the majority are non-functional, of over 80%. And the, the, the functioning ones are less common. Um, it's good that they're functional in that the cells are more organized. They're more like normal cells. But the bad part is, in some regard, they make stuff like the gastrin. Gastronomas, they make a, a molecule or hormone that stimulates your stomach to make acid. The insulinomas make insulin, it drops your blood sugar. So that's something we have to uh, address pretty quickly. Um, for MEN1, we're the number two lesion. I guess the parathyroid lesions are the most common. Uh, and then we're, the pancreas tumors are the second most common. Uh, and then it's the gastrin producing ones. Those functional gastrin tumors are about two thirds of cases and then the other one third are those insulin producing uh, lesions, tumors. Um, where they start out from in the pancreas, they can be anywhere in the gland. We call this the head of the gland, neck of the gland, tail of the gland. Uh, and then there's lymph nodes around that. The, the cells can jump to a lymph node. We don't think that's as important as say breast cancer. You've heard about taking out lymph nodes for breast cancer or colon cancer. But uh, when it also can get in the bloodstream uh, as opposed to the lymph system and head up to the liver. The liver is just a filter, and it's filtering the blood that comes to it, and, and then these cells, some of them can set up shop there and, and then grow its own, their own mass in the liver. Um, you don't have to rush to treatment. I think you have time to, we can give fluids, give electrolytes or minerals. Um, for the gastrin producing cells, you can, can limit the acid uh, or give things like octreotide. That can slow the growth of these. You don't have to get into an operating room within a week or anything like that. So you can pick the therapy that's best for you uh, that can depend on your symptoms. If you, if it, you do have one of those insulin producing lesions and the blood sugar is dropping, that can be more dangerous. Folks can pass out when the blood sugar gets low. So those we tend to have to operate on the sooner side, but the other ones are more slowly growing. Uh, CAT scan, I want to show some CAT scans. Uh, that's the main way we can find these lesions in the pancreas or the liver. Um, there's other blood sampling things that can be done. Octreotide scans. I talked about octreotide as a medicine to slow the growth, but we can also look for the octreotide receptors. They're functional imaging, uh, and I'll show a picture of that. It'll, the, the lesion will light up brightly, uh, and then that can help us target it and help us get it out or treat it in, in a number of different ways. They're blood markers. You guys may have heard of chromogranin A. That's one thing that can measure, be measured in the bloodstream for neuroendocrine tumors. And then ultrasound of the liver or the pancreas is another way to identify or biopsy these things. Here's an ultrasound of a lesion in the pancreas. Here's a needle coming in to biopsy it and see exactly what's going on. Is it a neuroendocrine lesion? Is it something else? Um, so if we want to know or you want to know, you can biopsy these things. And then taking them out, uh, whether it's liver or pancreas, you have to decide if, if to get the thing out. Here's a, a lesion in the pancreas, and here they've enucleated it, they'll say. They push some of the pancreatic tissue away from this mass or tumor, and they're able to get this out with preserving a lot of normal pancreas. You do have to be careful I'll show you not to injure any of the pancreatic duct or the bile duct that can be nearby, uh, blood vessels nearby or in the liver. Uh, and that can weigh into whether you come right around the lump or take a larger section of, of tissue, whether it's pancreas or liver. We looked at, at uh, a bunch of neuroendocrine, people with neuroendocrine tumors uh, in the pancreas. Uh, again, the majority were non-functional. Uh, only a minority were, had functional tumors like, like that you have with MEN1. Uh, the functional tumors do better. If the tumor has jumped to the liver, 
folks do a little worse. I know it's hard to read, but here's everybody. And then if you get a lesion to the liver, you do a little worse, but it's not dramatically worse like some of the other cancers, like pancreatic adenocarcinoma. So there are a lot of treatment options if it does go to the liver, so it can be treated. Uh, here's NCCN guidelines. Um, it's a good resource, and if you guys haven't been on that website, it's nccn.org, and they have the, a, a little guideline just on neuroendocrine tumors and just on pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. So go check it out. You just have to give them an email address, and, and then you can look at the guidelines. So it's a nice resource. Um, and again, they talk about scanning if it's spread to the liver. Uh, you can do the somatostatin scintigraphy or functional imaging and then check the urine or the blood for, for a tumor marker. Uh, a couple CAT scans just to get a feel for these. These, what a CAT scan looks like. These are the kidneys in the back. Here's your liver up here, nice and healthy, no lesions. But here's the pancreas and there's a lump right in there where the green uh, marks are. And that was a, it was a neuroendocrine tumor. It did. nice healthy liver uh, and then there's a lump in the head of the pancreas where this calcium dot is and if you let your eye drift down you get an idea that there's a lump there this one's a little bit big to enucleate or push some of the pancreatic tissue away uh, so somebody like this they resect that part of the pancreas or the head of the pancreas to get this thing out with those lymph nodes here's one in the tail of the pancreas remember you get them in, in any part of the gland and and here's the pancreas. If you let your eyes go across to the right, something catches your eye out here, and that's a, a neuroendocrine tumor out of the tail of the pancreas. Um, sometimes we can use the laparoscopes. You guys have heard that for taking out the gallbladder, um, but we can use the laparoscopes to divide the pancreas and save the rest of the normal pancreas and get this tumor out. Sometimes you have to take the spleen with it, but, uh, but that you can get out of the body. Um, liver. So it can spread to the liver, can get in the bloodstream, and then get up and filtered by the liver. This woman had the, the pancreatic part or primary removed in 2008, and it got in her blood and went to her liver, and we didn't see it for years. We kept getting pictures of the liver, pictures of the liver. So what is that, seven years ago? Finally, you know, the next year we get a scan and, and we see something catches your eye up here. And we talked about the different options we did. I think we did a scintigraphy. Here you go. So you get an idea of what the scintigraphy looks like. So it's bright. It's, it's a little fuzzy, the rest of it, but then you just see an area of brightness. So you know this lesion has octreotide receptors. Octreotide is an option. It's a little bit bigger to do you know, ablation or other local treatments to the liver. And we talked to her about surgery and octreotide. And, and since it was an isolated lesion, she went with surgery and had that removed. Another woman had her, the, the tumor of her pancreas removed a year, two years prior. And then when we were doing our CAT scans, um, we saw a couple things in the liver. That'll catch your eye there and there. And then when we did our octreotide scan, it doesn't show up as well, but there's a faint uh, blush over here. So only this one had some octreotide receptors in it. And so that was harder. You know, do you treat this? woman with octreotide or do you not? This one doesn't have any receptors. This has a few. I think at the end we'll, we are going to end up treating with octreotide. But we didn't rush right to surgery because it would just may damage the liver. And there was probably a third or fourth lesion. Um, and it, we didn't want to hurt the liver putting too many, too many resection sites. Uh, it may just be too much surgery. So the NCCN guidelines talk about possible resecting if you can get it out, you know, one lesion, two lesions, um, not three or four. Uh, if you're asymptomatic, you can consider octreotide because uh, it does slow the growth of the lesions, whether pancreas, but mainly in the liver, it can slow things down. Uh, if, but if octreotide doesn't work, uh, the oncologist also has some chemotherapy options. If it can't be removed, if we can't... Uh, uh, slow it down with octreotide. We can do chemotherapy. 
We've got other things they can do that Dr. Sturgeon alluded to um, from inside the liver where they can go up in the arteries of the liver that go to the segment where the lesion is and they can block the blood supply. They call embolization. Or they can squirt chemotherapy in and then block the blood supply. That's the chemoembolization. Or they can put in radioactive beads and then block the blood supply. That's the radioembolization. Um, I think the embolization is probably the most important point, but they can do all these different things from inside the arteries of the liver. I'll try to point out what I'm talking about. I don't have the arteries here, but here's your liver. We've separated out with the blood supply. Here's the, the veins coming in and the veins going out. Along this big vein is an artery, and believe it or not, they can get in the artery with their probes or wires, just like with a heart catheterization when they go and work on the heart. They can go up and work on the liver, go over to where the neuroendocrine lesion is and either block that artery, put in the chemotherapy and block the artery.